let's consider this molecule called BF3. That's a really old game. BF3, borotrifluoride. Cool. There are four kinds of vibrational modes. Let's experience them. What's breathing? Breathing. See, like in, out, in, out, breathing. Then out of plane, bending. Do you see it? Boom, 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 boom. Asymmetrical stretching. Okay, asymmetrical stretching. Asymmetrical, asymmetrical. And in plane bending. In plane means on a plane because it's a flat molecule, so it will bend. You see the bond just squeeze towards each other. Bend, bend, bend. Okay. Edward sees the hand. Yeah, like him. So is this mode R active? Yes. Thank you. And let's try this. Is this mode R active for the symmetrical stretching? You think? Okay. Oh, it is because you see, there's always a change in the double moment this way. Yeah, out of plane bending, is it active? Yes, it is active. There's a change. It will oscillate in and out of the page, you know, of the plane. And for breathing, breathing. That's right for breathing. That reason, because you see, it's it's always symmetrical. There's no change in the electrical double moment, no change in double moment, so it's not infrared active. That means for boron, we see three peaks, three signals. Now in this case, for the vibrational modes of benzene, what will we see over here? So this is the normal ion spectrum here. Normally I would tell my students to divide it into four regions. And you just zoom in down to check whether you have peaks, strong signals there. One is between the 2900 to 4000. That part is to check for your NH, OH, CH bond, parts and parcels of your organic molecules. The other region to check is about 2000 to 2900. This is to check for your triple bonds in nitrile, CN triple bond, or CC triple bond in the alkynes. And then the important region is between 1500 to 2000. This is where you check for your double bond, CO double bond, CN double bond, and CC double bond. Fingerprint regions normally applies to um, aromatic molecules that contain benzene ring, your phenyl substances, toluene in that case. They give you characteristics, like you said, fingerprint to identify certain functional group that's substituting onto the benzene ring. Whether it is 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 3, 5, try substituted benzene, you can see very clearly some of these characteristics in the fingerprint region, that's the 1500 and below. So the wavelength of the infrared radiation is normally expressed in wave number, which is the reciprocal of the wavelength. Right, so the wave number, it is defined as the number of waves per centimeter. So the unit is inverse cm. So like I said just now, that the wave number is proportional to the energy, to the frequency of the system, and normally the infrared spectra range from 4000 to 400 cm inverse. Remember this side? About 2900, what is it? CH single bond. See? The alkane here. Now for these two spectra, take a look. Again, we zoom down to the three regions. Because there's no benzene ring, so I do not care about the region below 1500. Now here, this zone here is to symbolize the presence of double bond. Ah, I see a strong signal here. There's a double bond. But since it lies about at the lower end of 1600, it is not CO double bond, it has to be CC double bond. And on this side, we have a peak here about 3000, there must be a CH single bond. So all in all, we know that this must be alkene. The next molecule, I check for this zone here. The 2000 zone to 2900 zone, I see a sharp strong peak. This has to be a triple bond. If we know that, it must belong to the alkyne in this case. And again, above 3000, we see single bond. This must be your CH single bond. Now, how do we know all this? You are always given a table. Do not memorize this. You need to know the three zones. You have to check and what to check for. But the detail, bonds, the vibration number, wave number here, you shouldn't memorize it. Okay, You have the table, just refer and check. And this table also gives you the intensity, 
how how much the absorption is. All right. So here in this table, we also understand whether it is a stretching vibrational mode or is it a bending vibrational mode, and the range of the wave number that occurs for these kind of fragments. So in this correlation table, we can see clearly what to look out for. If you predict that um, I'm making some fragrance to be used as perfume, then you think, oh, that should be an ester. So ester should have a CO single bond, CO double bond, and CH bond. So you scan the molecule, you look at the IR spectrum, and you see, mm, I should see a sharp and strong peak at about where? Uh, see an ester, 1735 to 1750. But if I get a sharp and strong peak, strong peak at a 1710, then you think, it might not be an ester, it might be something else, side product, I didn't get my ester. You can't only trust your smell, you see, your detection using the nose. You have to use something qualitative, your analytical techniques that give you a proof of what you want to make, what you synthesize, is exactly what it is. Okay, so even for CO double bond, different kinds in your carbonyl group, amide, esters, acid chloride, LDI ketone, there's a range given to it, but all of them are in unison, they are strong. That's a characteristic, so it's very easy to see whether a compound has sealed the bond or not. In fact, when I look at any random IR spectrum, I look at three things. I check for sealed double bond present. I check for about 1700, any sharp strong peak. In this case, 17,000, no, nope, no sharp strong peak, so no sealed double bond. And I look at this side, any peaks here? Oh yes, there's some peak. There's some peak, but these are not broad peaks, so I know that there won't be any hydrogen bond present. So there's no OH, there's no NH bond. And I see this, this distinctive sharp peak, so it must be a CH bond, definitely for organic compounds. And then I see a peak, sharp and strong peak, between 2000 and 2900. Definitely you have a triple bond. Then what kind of triple bond? I go back to the correlation table and see, this is my CN triple bond, your nitrile. I ignore this because this is fingerprint region. I know I don't have any phenyl groups here. So, if you take a look at your mass spectra, mass spectrometry, okay, these two has the same molecular ion peak of 58. But could you tell which one belongs to the acetone, which one belongs to the prop 2 in one nor? Because they have the same chemical formula but different molecular structure. How do you distinguish them? Right. It's tough. Using IR, you tell it instantly because for the acetone, CO double bond, you can't miss that. CO double bond. 1750 around that zone. Dun 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 dun. Here you go. Where else? Your alkene no does not have this sharp and strong peak. On the other hand, the alcohol has OH group. There's a peak at 3650. 3650, you can't see it for molecules without OH and H bond. So that's for sure. So to summarize, infrared spectroscopy is very good to detect the functional group in the molecule. Cheers.